This here is another viewer's dirty gaming PC. This one's real, real freaking gross. Um, you know, cable management looks really nice. I'm actually super impressed with the way it looks on this side, but uh, I don't... <laughs> I don't like the dust. There's a lot of that here. Um, the front fans are caked into each blade. Can't even tell what color the blades are because there's so much dust uh, behind each of them. The top flow air cooler here, the stock AMD cooler is absolutely caked. I'm sure that's affecting CPU temperatures. Uh, who knows what this graphics card looks like. It's, a, it's an old card, so it's probably been in here for a very long time and also probably hasn't been cleaned in a very long time. So who knows? Uh, all I know is that this thing really needs a makeover and that's why it's in the PCDC playlist. Is this a it's a Reese cup wrapper. Oh, who knows how long that's been in there. What the heck? That's the first time I've seen a candy wrapper in a computer before. <laughs> I just noticed that. It's been in there since I picked it up. Oh, wow. Well, if that's not a testament to um, how desperately this case needs a deep cleaning, I don't know what is. Uh, I hope you will enjoy this one. Um, it's gonna be a pretty sweet transformation, so be sure to stick around. Stay with me. NZXT has rolled out their new function mechanical keyboards in varying sizes and with plenty of customizability via their BLD service. Choose between five different gator on switches, three chassis colorways, two color keycaps, and multiple accent caps and cables for a truly unique custom mechanical experience. Enjoy RGB lighting, key remapping, and multiple sizes as well, from full size to mini TKL, like this one here. It's my favorite. It packs a lot of punch in such a tiny package with media keys, volume roller, and durable aluminum top plate to round out the industrial real feel. To start customizing your NCXT function mechanical keyboard, be sure to click the link below. Hey there, my name is Greg and this is the PCDC playlist which stands for Personal Computer Deep Cleaning. We deep clean viewer systems in and around Orlando, Florida for free. We do not charge a single dime so long as they're okay with us filming these processes. Now I get so many folks from all across the world asking if we can clean their systems. They ask how much we charge. Again, we don't charge anything but the caveat is that you have to be local. If you aren't local and you send us an email or you tweet at us or whatever, most of the time we're just going to ignore you because we've said this in virtually every one of these videos to date. I am not going to accept shipments because oftentimes what you'll find is that shipping a PC, especially across right, the Atlantic or the Pacific, costs more than the actual value of the PC that you're shipping. So it just makes no sense, right? Even if I'm going to give you the cleaning for free, you'll be paying way more in shipping than you ever would to have it professionally cleaned locally. So that's why I have the local restriction. This system, uh, well, it's, again, it's, it's pretty, pretty freaking dirty. Uh, and I think what we're gonna do is end up swapping out the case because, well, I was given this to clean without a left side panel and I was told that it was lost. Maybe that explains why it's so dirty. Air likes to take the path of least resistance. And while it can be great for CPU and GPU temperatures to remove the left side panel altogether, you're obviously opening up the possibility for dust and other things to settle in here, including Reese cup wrappers for whatever reason. Uh, now that said, there still obviously was quite a bit of air moving through the front panel and you can see that the dust filter behind it is also absolutely caked. And again, the fans behind that dust filter are also caked. So uh, at one point, obviously the left side panel had to be on, but uh, it, it's it's just gross everywhere. And it's, it's screaming for a disassembly and proper deep cleaning, which we're gonna give it in this video. Now, one last thing before we get started, my cleaning gear. This stuff is linked in the video description. So if you see me use anything that you wanna buy, check it out down there. Uh, I've got shop towels here, great at absorbing liquids, including isopropyl alcohol. This is 99.9% .9 medical grade stuff, but um, any IPA should do. Uh, we have an electric duster. This is a bigger one than my old one, which died. And this has nylon anti-static bristles at the head so you can you know, scrub things. Uh, it's actually very useful, especially with circuit boards. I have cotton swabs, which are used for cleaning uh, in particular PC fans and things like that. Also getting around SMDs and smaller like, you know, you know, bits of circuit boards and whatnot. Uh, so these come in very handy for that. And then I have a knockoff iFixit toolkit. It's not iFixit because um, I'm a baller on a budget, but it has everything practically that you'll need. And then I have some nitro gloves because some of the stuff is freaking gross. Okay, with that out of the way, I think we are ready to begin the disassembly process and the deep cleaning montage. Hope you guys enjoy this section. Here we go.
Well, that was eventful. I uh, still need to deep clean the office. We need to clean the table, especially before we start reassembling everything because all the stuff back here has been now deep cleaned. But you're probably wondering about one major component and that's the case. Usually I still take the time to deep clean the case in question, even if we intend to swap it out or upgrade the viewer with a new case that obviously doesn't need to be cleaned because it is brand new. But uh, I made an exception for this one, I think because it's missing the left side panel and the fact that it is quite old, it's just really not worth the effort. I'll probably end up tossing it to be honest, unless someone picks it up from my trash before before the trash comes, I don't know. But uh, it's just, yeah, it's, it's not really worth the time. I wanted to show you one, one more time here what it looks like. Uh, we got, you know, a few fans in here. I didn't bother cleaning those, of course, because they're just old. We're gonna get new fans in the new case we're gonna be upgrading this viewer with. Speaking of, that case is the Be Quiet Peerbase 500DX. So that's this bad boy right here. And it actually comes with a lot of very cool features. If you've been watching this playlist for a while, you've probably already met the 500DX, but it is an excellent mid-tower comes with several fans, comes with RGB baked in, and it's not gonna break the bank either. Airflow is excellent, plenty of hardware support. It's really the best of everything in this price range, I think. One of my favorite things about the 500DX, these included 140 millimeter Pure Wings 2 fans. You get three of them in here. So one at the rear, one up top, and one up front. Although for most of my builds, I like to move the top fan up here to the front. So you'll have two intakes and one exhaust, plus you know whatever extra fan you might have for your CPU, tower cooler, uh, or what have you. So uh, you could mount your AIO up top and add a couple more fans there, or you can mount it up front, up to 360 mil is supported. You can see those perforations at the front panel. So you get plenty of great airflow as well. I've recommended this case to so many viewers looking for something in the $100 price range. Again, mid towers you know, of this size, this form factor are my favorite because once you fill in the motherboard, Board and you've got a beefy graphics card, maybe a, an AIO up front or something, the case looks very filled out. There's no empty space. And uh, you know, if you went with a full tower or something, unless you populate all the hard drive bays or what have you, it just, it looks a little too empty, like something's missing. Uh, but these mid towers are just the sweet spot in my opinion. And you know, if you're just looking to maybe swap the case out to revamp a build that you currently have, I mean, you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars to upgrade your build. All you need to do is just swap the case out and that can fairly modernize uh, the PC overall. And that's what I'm hoping will happen here with this one. So all we're gonna be swapping out is this Purebase 500DX. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I think the viewer is gonna be happy with that. Uh, the other hardware in there appears to be fairly balanced. The 970 is a bit old, but the R5 2600 is a pretty sweet CPU still uh, for a budget build here in 2022. Now, before we get to reassembling, we need to allow these, these components behind me on the shelf to finish drying overnight. Some of them we soaked in water and scrubbed, uh, and uh, so I, I want those to thoroughly dry before we reassemble, just to be on the safe side. So we'll go back to this in the morning. Three, two, one, is it morning now? Hey, here it is, day two, and the office has been fully deep cleaned, so ready to reassemble. I have the platform here in front of me. We'll get this taken care of. We'll throw it into the 500DX, and then we'll power the system on and make sure that everything works prior to dropping it back off for the viewer. Are you ready? Build montage number two, here we go. Three, two, one. Swoosh.
I'm an idiot. I completely forgot about something fairly important, and that is these custom cable extensions. And uh, these, I think, really transformed this build. I like that they were in there to begin with, even though it's not a super expensive uh, PC. Uh, these can really transform the overall aesthetics, and they don't cost a lot. You can find kits like these on Amazon for like 20 or 30 bucks. So we're gonna go ahead and swap these back into this viewer's rig, and then we'll attempt to power it on, make sure everything works and then we'll be finished. So we'll get this 24 pin situated like these uh, cable combs keeps things nice and straight here. Oh yeah, these really help with the aesthetics. I really like the way these look. Again, they don't break the bank either. So if you're a baller on a budget, you know, it doesn't really make much sense to spend like a hundred plus US dollars on fully custom sleeve cables for a particular power supply. Not that that would work anyway for, uh, for this unit, which is a non-modular one, but you know, just adding a few you know, cheaper, more affordable custom sleeve cables like these, just extensions. It just really helps make this build pop. I really like that they work perfectly with the uh, DDR4 in here as well. All right, and now it is time to make sure that the system turns on. I'm expecting it to, not any reason to suspect otherwise. I like the, uh, the synchronization of the red LED in the AMD stock core, it looks really nice. Let's see what we get here. Just going through my head, making sure that I connected everything. We should get a post. And I believe there's already an operating system on here. So technically it should boot into Windows. But we still don't have a picture out. Maybe it's just freaking out because we reseeded a bunch of stuff. Sometimes it needs to train memory again. There we go. So there's our post. And just want to double check that it boots into Windows. I, I, I'm, again, I'm pretty sure that it will. Yep, there we go. Okay, so. The system's finished, it's been disassembled, cleaned, reassembled, and it works. Job well done. Now quickly, one more thing that I think is really cool about the 500DX, you get integrated RGB, so you don't have to spend any extra for it if that's something you want, or if you don't like RGB, you can just turn it off. Uh, but in this case, you can actually cycle different color presets, and because this build has a red theme, what we can do is set it to red and just leave it there. So in this case, you know, really can adapt to uh, other color schemes, other, other build designs out there. So if you want to upgrade to the 500DX and you're concerned about that, um, just buy a black case like this one and, you know, sync the colors up to whatever you desire. And it's going to look pretty sweet inside. I think this is, uh, yeah, I mean, this, this is one of the best looking cases for me personally, on the market in the mid-tower sector. So here we have it. This system is looking so, so much better now, if I do say so myself. We've given it new life, not only with the change of the case, we've got a much newer case here, which I think modernizes the entire build, but we've also cleaned all of the components, so they should last quite a bit longer now, and temperatures probably went down. And people are always asking about, hey, can you test temperatures before and after? There will likely be a small difference, unless you have like a ton of dust blocking, especially like fan entrance places or uh, maybe you have a ton of it caked up in your radiator um, those would cause pretty severe temperature spikes but uh, if you just have you know blanketed light dust atop the graphics card let's say or maybe some of it's on the backs of like these fans or what have you like it, it's not going to impact temperatures to a to a severe extent and so it would be you know pretty repetitive to show that over and over i do i do have plans though at one point to kind of do a before and after and just use that one video as a frame of reference for anyone who asks. But uh, I just wanted to throw that out there because I always get folks asking in the comments section. Um, other than that though, I think, well, you know, it, it's nice now, right? <laughs> it looks a lot better. The only thing I'm a bit upset about, um, the micro ATX motherboard here does leave a bit of a gap. So we've got our cables at the bottom reaching quite a ways uh, to the ports here at the bottom, the headers. Um, that's the only eyesore I think. And most of it, I mean, is, is kind of covered anyway by the card, it's, it's all under here. So um, that's my only complaint, but everything else I think is top notch. Now with that, if you or someone you know lives in and around Orlando, Florida, and you have a dirty system that looks anything like this or dirtier, I want to clean it for free. I'll basically go through the same process as I went through in this video. I'll document it all. You can show your friends the before and after. Say, hey, I was on the channel. It was really cool. He didn't pay or he didn't charge a dime um, and I uh, got a free deep cleaning out of it. Um, my goal here with this one is to kind of spread the word so that we can keep this playlist going because most of you seem to like this one and uh, that's why we're already right deep into season three. So hopefully by the end of this one, we can pick like some really disgusting ones to close it out. And uh, I do think there'll be a season four on the horizon as well. We seem to have enough 
supply, so to speak, in the area to keep this going for another season. So we'll see, but uh, I'm really happy with this one. And if you want yours clean for free, right? Zero dollars, zero cents I'm gonna charge. Uh, then uh, reach out. We have a form linked in this video's description. It'll take you to our website. You can submit photos, a description, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this one, give us a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated. Let us know in the comment section below what you thought of the transformation, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. My name is Greg. Thanks for deep cleaning with me.